In this video, I'm going to chat about a GD&T topic, uh, the limitations of the limits of size. So as a refresher, the limits of size concern rule number one. Rule number one states that features, individual features, must have perfect form at MMC. So as another refresher, MMC stands for maximum material condition. It's when an external feature is at its largest size or an internal feature is at its smallest size. So rule number one just says when that occurs, that feature must be perfect in form. So a pin or a shaft at MMC must be perfectly straight and a hole at MMC must be perfectly straight and true, okay? So what this does is make things easy to tolerance. So if we have a pin with set its MMC to be smaller than the MMC of a hole it's got to fit into, we know those two parts will always fit. That's what's known as allowance, the difference between the MMC of a hole and a pin or something that fits in it. It's not just for round parts, you can use it for square, rectangular parts as well. We usually talk about it in terms of diameters. Now, this is great for individual features. Where this rule fails us is related features. So if you have more than one feature stuck together, like the example I put on the screen here, you have two diameters, so it looks kind of like a pin with a head on it. These are related features. Rule number one does not apply, okay? So those features don't have to be perfect in form to each other. Right. So what this means, and I'll put another figure up, if we tolerance these two diameters to fit in this uh, stepped hole, even if we left allowance for both diameters, it might not fit depending on the amount of uh, variation allowed between the diameters. So where does that variation come from? If there's no direct tolerancing, it's going to come from the tidal block. Now, tidal block tolerances are really common. Uh, I recommend that you just use them in case you forget to tolerance something. Some companies use them for a lot of things. Tidal block tolerances will almost always have an angle tolerance. It'll say something like untoleranced angles are plus or minus something degrees. In this example, I'm going to use three degrees. Now I'm doing this because I want it to be really obvious what's going on here. Most companies don't use three degrees, they use like half a degree or something. So if we took that smaller diameter and said it was at MMC, the largest size it can be, and it was out by three degrees. So we measured it with a height gauge or a dial indicator, however we do it three degrees out compared to the bottom surface of that top diameter. So I got a figure up here. When we trig it out, we'll find out that that takes up 0.54 uh, inches of room. So that means that the two diameters are kind of crooked in relation to each other. So even though they're both within tolerance, they both come in at MMC and that angle is three degrees, so within tolerance, those two diameters would not fit in that stepped, uh, that stepped hole, okay? You can imagine it's kind of like a bent thing that wouldn't fit. Now, this isn't good, right? Now, you could say, well, nobody uses three degree tidal block tolerances. Well, you're right. That'd be like half a degree, and if you tricked it out, maybe they would fit, depending on the allowance you gave them. But if the allowance was smaller, you know, you could still run into problems. Now you could always dimension your dimension and tolerance your way out of this, but you still have to remember that tidal block tolerances don't come with inspection rules. So when this part gets inspected, they could use the top surface of that top diameter as a datum. They could use the bottom surface. They could capture the MME, uh, AME of one of those diameters and measure it like that. There's just a bunch of different ways they could measure this part to try to figure out what that angle is. Now, what ASME Y145 recommends in this situation is to apply perpendicularity uh, tolerance on the axis of one of those features and use a zero at MMC. So what does this do? Let's apply, and I'll put a figure up, a datum to that bottom surface. We'll just arbitrarily choose it as our datum. And we're going to apply a zero at MMC 
to that bottom diameter. What this does is establish a virtual condition for that feature. What it's saying is that if that feature comes in as MMC, it's gotta be perfect in relation to the other feature, right? So what this does is at MMC, it's gotta be perfect. If it leaves MMC, so if it comes in 10,000 smaller, you get 10 thousandths of perpendicularity tolerance. So the pin can be bent a little bit, but that's okay because it's still gonna fall in that uh, half an inch spectrum where it would fit just fine into the other part, okay? So zero MMC isn't for everything, but for parts like this, especially that have been toleranced with regular dimensioning schemes, it can be a pretty quick fix. Now you wanna watch out, the total tolerance isn't huge because the MMC, the zero to MMC, you get more perpendicularity tolerance as a, the pen gets smaller, so it could end up being really bent. But you know, this is one of the risks you have to run. Now, the upshot to this method of using the GD&T instead of the title block tolerance is that there's a reference for inspecting it. You can always go to ASME Y14.5. If you don't have a copy of that, you can get a textbook uh, and you can actually see what it's trying to tell you as opposed to an angle tolerance where you're just kind of guessing as how to measure it. Every shop might do it a little bit differently. Now, this part would have to be tolerance a little bit more to get it to fit perfectly, right? This is just an explanation of how to get past that rule number one limitation, okay? So that's it for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this information, and I'll try to make more of these GD&T videos coming up soon.